Hi friends, this is Kristen Fagan with Softlex Company and we are gonna be live with Abby Berta of The Bee Place in just a moment. Hey, Gail. Yeah, it's just me, Kristen, here today. <laughs> Sarah's on vacation, and um, I'll be just hanging out with our friend Abby, and I'll see you guys in just a second. For those of you just tuning in, it's Kristen here, and we're gonna be uh, chatting with Abby from The Bee Place. Um, if you got our Supernova kit, we're gonna specifically take a look at those cool Luna bracelets. So you won't wanna miss that. Hello, hello everybody. Oh, we have so many friends tuning in. Abby, let me know when you're ready to go. All right. <laughs> Thumbs up. Hey. <laughs> hey everyone. Hi, Abby. Oh, I'm so excited to chat with you today. Me too. I've been I've been looking forward to this for a while, and I um, I don't take the time to read things very carefully as I should. So I uh, have been like anxiously awaiting opening this package, and then when I found out that I could open the package, it was like, oh, oh let me get into this. So, yeah, well, let's excited. see what you get. <laughs> So for those of you just tuning in, I'm Kristen Fagan with Softlex Company and Sarah Ayler is usually my partner in beating crime. She's not here today. She's on vacation, a much deserved break. Um, so you just got me here today and we are chatting with the lovely, the talented, the super fantastic Miss Abby Berta of The Bee Place. Hi, Abby. Hi, thanks for all those kind compliments. Hi, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. I feel super honored to, to be here. Um, so uh, I just want to say real quick, I know you probably have your your uh, agenda of things that you have to go over, but I just want to say, like, I have been using Softlex wire ever since I was a child. So this is really cool for me. Like, I feel <laughs> Super, super honored to be here. Ah! Oh, you're so cute to think I have an agenda. <laughs> Gosh, I just show up and wing it, right? Just kind of figure it out as we go. <laughs> but, um, but that's really, really sweet and kind of you to say. And I was going to bring that up, that you have been beating or around beating since you were a kid. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your story. So I have been um, always interested, like even when I was like a, a toddler, always interested in just stringing beads. Um, I have like 
when I was a kid, I used to play like ancient Egypt and stuff. So I've always been a little bit of like a history and anthropology nerd. Um, and beads, of course, go hand in hand with that. And so growing up, I was really lucky to be in a family that kind of fostered that. And my mom opened a bead store because <laughs> of my hobby. Um, and so she has since retired. Wait, 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 wait. Did your mom, did you just say your mom opened a bead store because of your hobby? Whoa, yeah. that's <laughs> awesome. We, my family, we just like go for stuff. Like we're, we're, we're wild. We just. <laughs> You yes. just jump right in. <laughs> oh, that's friends. super cool. See, yeah. of course, you know, just knowing I knew that you had gotten into beating young and that your mom had a store, but yeah. I just thought traditionally, okay, mom was interested. She got the store and you just were kind of there from the get go. But wow, that is yeah. really cool. So, so obviously she was into beating too, but she got into beating because of my interest in it. And of course she's still interested in jewelry making and all that, but um, you know, she's found other hobbies and stuff that have pulled her away. And she, I think like all of us, we kind of go through phases with crafts and stuff, but beating has always been like numero uno for me. So it's it's been, it's been my life. Yeah, that is, that's amazing. What a cool mom I'm seeing yeah. Robin Wilkie say here. Yeah, <laughs> very, very cool. I mean, yeah. how awesome that she wanted to foster that love of beating in you and then do it on such a grand scale. Yeah. And, <laughs> and now you have, you know, she started this business, but you have now moved into it right is that basically what yep. happened yeah yeah i was in high school when we opened so i would go to school during the day and then come in and you know work behind the counter after my homework was done and <laughs> my aunt joined in a few years into the business and so it's been uh, a fun family affair um, my aunt has found another calling um but we have made family out of all of our staff members as well and so it's just it's fun. It's cool. That's really <laughs> awesome to hear. That's the that's the the joy of you know being in a small business, right? Is you get to surround yourself with people that are become your family, and you get to do something you all love, and you get to really enjoy that craft together. Um, it's super special. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. There's so there's I, certainly something special to craft businesses, um, and and beyond that, I think the the ties to history that beading has, I think is pretty cool. It's super cool. So Christy is asking, where is the bead place at? We are in the St. Louis area. We are on the Illinois side of the Mississippi. So we're in a town called Fairview Heights. Um, and if you're familiar with the St. Louis area, we are right across from the mall in Fairview Heights. So. Oh, and you just moved. So are you okay. close to where you were before or are yeah. you kind of in a different area? We're, okay. We're still in the major shopping area. Um, we are uh, like, I'm looking at the interstate right now. So even closer to anybody trying to find us. Oh, that makes it nice. I always love when you could just hop right off the highway and something's right there. You don't have to dig too far. That makes it really easy and convenient. Yeah. And you have this gorgeous beaded wall behind you. I'm just going to spotlight you so we can see what's what's <laughs> shaking back there. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, if you go to the Bead Places Facebook page, the like cover photo for our Facebook page is most of the wall. I don't want to say it's all of it, um, but that's that's like a better shot than like what's blurry behind me. But yeah, we have um, just under 4,000 square feet of beads. Uh, so we we like it here. <laughs> <laughs> and in addition to beading, you also have um, a whole nother facet of your business. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So inside our bead store, we also have a full service yarn store. So we carry luxury yarns from a lot of the um, like top yarn brands. Um, and we do knitting, crochet, weaving, spinning, felting, all kinds of fiber arts classes as well. And what's really cool is beads and yarn play really nicely together. You can incorporate yarn and fibers into your jewelry making and vice versa. Beads go on knitting and crochet really well. So they, they play nice. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, that is so true. And it's really, if you guys caught Abby on the Great Beat Extravaganza on her most recent project, she did combine um, some of her really fun, funky cactus cord along with pearls and soft flex. And it was a really, really cool project. Um, so it was great to see you combine those two together. And I think you got a really great response. I remember everyone being like, what is that cord? I, yeah. They were just super excited about it. Yeah, it's fun to be in both industries because I can see things in the bead world that work really well in the yarn world as well, and then vice versa. So when I first saw our um, our yarn rep, so the, the yarn world for like uh, yarn stores, there's reps that come to see you and they show you the, the yarns for the season. Um, and when I first saw that particular yarn, I was like, oh, I need this for jewelry making. Like, sure, it'll work well for knitting, but this is a jewelry yarn. So we started right. it and it's worked well ever since. Oh, very cool. Danielle. Hi, Danielle. She says, I would like it there. I agree. I would like it there too. <laughs> One of the really cool things about our location is that since we're right off the interstate from downtown St. Louis, there's a lot of hotels with um, like great convention centers that would be good for beading. So if you guys want to just come make a weekend of it, we could book a ballroom and just have a bead party. Oh, we need to have a, a real live bead party. <laughs> that would take it to the next level. That would be so much fun. And I was just, um, I was also thinking about how you really love color. I, you know, you have, you've had your hair all different colors and specifically thinking of the cactus cord and your green hair that you had. Um, <laughs> but then just seeing all of the color behind you and I always um, really enjoy all the projects you create, the ones that I've seen that have just had this really intense, fantastic color combinations. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Yeah. I have fun with it because it, I don't know. Otherwise, it gets boring. I think that when you've been in the industry for so long, um, I think that a lot of times when you're first into something, you feel a bit apprehensive to take risks with wild colors and bold choices and stuff. But um, go for it, because otherwise, I mean, you're you're missing out. <laughs> Danielle looks like she's ready to get on a plane. Rebecca said she would love something like that. <laughs> Rosalinda said that would be awesome. Oh, yeah. So you're definitely getting some love for your real in-person live beating party idea. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> we really should. Christy is asking, do you do bead shows? I don't know if you ever have or yes. what's going on there. But So we used to be exhibitors at a couple of the different shows in uh, Tucson. We had done the Tucson Bead Show and Two Bead True Blue. We've done some of the Intergalactic and Intergem shows. Um, and then we have done Bead Fest Philadelphia and Bead and Button, which um, unfortunately is no longer a show, but. Um, that was a good, I enjoyed that show. That was a fun one to go to. Yeah. Um, I think because it was very contained, you know, I guess I, some of the other shows I've been to are a little more chaotic. That one was always very well kind of structured i don't know i had a lot going on for it I, had, I always enjoyed the exhibits and stuff that they did too throughout that show i thought that was a fun aspect yeah um, i think that the uh, they did a great job to appeal to a lot of different types of feeders um and have things that would keep your interest and keep yeah. you on the show <laughs> Olivia is saying that you are one of your fa you are one of her favorite creators. Aww. Yeah, I can Olivia. I can see why. And speaking of creators, I know that you do um, video some live videos on Facebook, but you also have a very fantastic large um, YouTube channel. So tell us a little bit about those. Sure. So I have been making jewelry tutorials on YouTube for a little over 10 years now. Um, and it started out as just kind of a way for me to be able to help my customers um, who needed help at three o'clock in the morning with a closed strap loop. And, um, you know, the bead place isn't open then. So having a video tutorial with like the steps to remind you how to do some of those processes. Um, I thought would be helpful and it just kind of took off from there. So 
once the channel started getting a little bit more traction, what we did was more structured project tutorials. Um, and we provide kits for all of the projects that we show on YouTube. Um, and then if you're local to the St. Louis area, the majority of the projects actually are monthly free workshops that we hold in the store. We had taken a brief hiatus from those because of the pandemic, but um, next month we are starting them up again. So we're really excited to be able to Wonderful. have in-person and online um, workshops and projects that everybody can access. Oh, that's fantastic. So how does, how does that work? Do you have set times and things when people would come in for a workshop and they have that specific kit that you're planning to do? Yeah, so generally our free workshops that are in person are the last Saturday of every month between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. Central. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, and it looks like such a wonderful store to check out and look at because um, sadly, our local bead stores are few and far between that actually have a location, a brick and mortar space. So you were really quite unique these days in that you have this beautiful, gorgeous space. People can come in and check out all the beads in person and then do these free workshops. You said the last Saturday, is that mm -hmm. right? Usually yep. last yeah. Saturday of the month. So if anyone is nearby or I th saw someone say that they, you were in driving distance, you could make <laughs> a little trip out to visit Abby. <laughs> yeah, come see us. <laughs> Oh, such lovely comments. Terry says, Abby has always been my inspiration. Aw, thanks, Terry. You're so sweet. And then here is a link to the Bee Places YouTube channel. So you can go find them um, at Abby Berta, B E R T A. Thanks. Someone is asking if you are on TikTok as well. Oh, that's a question <laughs> that I don't know how to answer because I feel like I. Uh, I'm not good at TikTok. I have a TikTok for the bead place, but like I don't do it well. So yes, we have a TikTok, but don't expect much from us. On TikTok, yeah, to be honest. you know, <laughs> it's it's hard to do all of the things, and yeah. um, you know, like there's some things that just kind of come natural and it just flows with what you've got going on. And you're like, all right, I can run with this. And there's other things that just don't as much. So I can understand how. Um, TikTok it may not be where you can focus as much energy yeah. right now. Yeah. Thank you for understanding, Kristen. <laughs> oh yeah, I understand. <laughs> Rebecca loves your videos. Thank as you. As well. Yeah, Sarah has been actually doing TikTok for us, um, but I haven't quite, I do Instagram and I do the reels, mm -hmm. but she's kind of ventured off into the TikTok world and I decided I wasn't along for the ride. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but not yet. I, there's just, I feel like if I would have gotten in on TikTok, like when it first came out, I would understand it better and like understand all the like nuances and like inside jokes almost. But like, I feel like I'm not clued in on it. So I'm just going to step away from it. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite, oh, there's a lot of crafters on there. So there probably yeah. is a lot of stuff I'd like. I just, don't really go on it, but yeah. I do love the dances. I'm kind of a sucker for getting looped into like the dance pattern and seeing oh, what everyone's cool. doing. I think it's kind of hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a good dancer and I, I know you've done some dancing videos, so. I have. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of funny. It's more of like just an, it's an outlet I always enjoyed as a kid and then even as a young adult. And then as you get older, you just don't have the opportunities to really dance very often. Yep. So, um, so occasionally I'll put up a dance video and I have a couple of people that are always like, yes, because <laughs> I, I think I give them permission to kind of be silly and just do it. Yeah. Um, Cause I don't look great, but, <laughs> but I, <laughs> You're an inspiration to, to like get up and do it and get moving. So yeah, I, I, I started to do, I like to dance under the full moon. That's one of my favorite ways to, speaking of our little supernova kit, we've got our yep. little moon faces in there, but um, I love to go out under the full moon and just, I have a playlist I put on and I just dance under the moonlight. And I started to do that with my 
Discover Your Creative um, Magic Facebook group. And it's very low key. I just invite people if they want to join me in the, like we're in a Facebook room. So it's kind of there and then it's gone. It's not like saved anywhere or anything. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that's been kind of fun because I'm sure my neighbors, I don't know them very well, but they probably see me out there sometimes because sometimes the moon's in the front yard yeah. um, and I'm out there. <laughs> I'm that neighbor too, Chris. so I get it. I know. I'm like, it's a good thing it's dark. <laughs> They're probably wondering what is happening out front. <laughs> but yeah, so... Is there anything else you want to share with us before we take a look at um, the kit and the and the Luna bracelets? Not that I can think of, but thanks for checking. Right. <laughs> yeah, dance like no one is watching. Yes, exactly, Sue. <laughs> That's exactly what I was what I'm trying to do for myself, and then give other people permission to do because. And I feel that way with creativity too. You know, it's great to step out of the box a little bit and play and do things that may feel a little a little odd or a little left of center, but you never know what's gonna come of it. And that's why creativity is so fun. Yeah, I agree. Oh, I did see, I missed your comment earlier, Sue, but um, it looks like her cat got onto her, onto her keyboard when she went and got a drink and put in a whole bunch of letters. <laughs> So that's pretty funny. <laughs> that is. Funny. Yeah, totally, Beverly. Beverly says, celebrate life by having fun while we can. 100%. Yeah, I know. I miss dancing too, Susie. <laughs> Rebecca would like a neighbor like that. You know, nobody has come out and joined me, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty cool if somebody did, though, if they came out and were like, hey, what are you doing? I want to get in on this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised no one has, honestly. Right? Uh, maybe I'm, I, I am a little sheepish, so maybe I'm just not allowed enough. I don't know. So yeah. I might have to turn it up. <laughs> do you listen to music in your headphones while you do it? Or do you like play music? I usually play music. I usually just bring my phone out and play the music because um, I'm not a big headphone person. Yeah. You, every everyone else in my house is so in a way I kind of get the freedom to not be as onto my headphones because I've got three other people in my three te two teenagers and my husband who are always got their headphones on so I feel like I'm just hanging out by myself most of the time anyway I, um, like I, I live in a house like that too so I, yeah I yeah so pretty fun all right so let's get beading and take a look at uh at what we've got here cool i'm gonna see if i can i'm gonna spotlight you okay. so that you can go ahead and i am gonna try to switch cameras alex left me so oh he did just at this moment <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um kristen do you do you have your hand cam set up or no I do, yeah. Okay, I was gonna say while I figure this out, if you would uh, want to show yeah. the kit, that way I can get my uh, my kit on the screen. You got it. Thank you. Oh, and I also have this. I made this with Christy Friesen during the Great Beat Extravaganza, oh, and so pretty. it's huge. And I even like had to make it smaller. I don't know for some reason it just was the first time I was doing it, so I went real big. Um, but it goes so well with this kit. I'm really thinking that I'm going to end up using it with some of these beads here. That's gorgeous. Yeah, and it was so fun. I I had bought some of that epoxy clay stuff she has and hadn't used it yet. So I took the Great Beat Extravaganza uh, opportunity <laughs> to give it a try. So for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, we have the Great Beat Extravaganza is a collective. Abby is, um, the Bead Place is one of the companies involved along with Softlex Company and there's 14 of us total. You can find us at the Great Beat Extravaganza Facebook page and join the Great Beat Extravaganza group. And I think our next uh, event is in April. Yeah, I am super excited. It's like in spring, 
the events are almost back to back and then we've got a little bit of a wait before we get to the summer and the fall. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's like the bead time is now. <laughs> right. So I'm I'm opening up some of these beads from our mystery design kit, the supernova one. Um, we had these these bead strands in here, these gorgeous leaves are so cool. I have to figure out something fun to do with these. But Sarah did do a TikTok over at Softlex Company's TikTok page. So you can see what she made um, with those. These two strands here. And then we had another strand that I made a video on Monday with is these little... Um, I don't know what, I think they're fire polish, right? With a yeah. little AB on there. Hey, someone had a question for me the other day. Why are they called fire polish? I think it's the cut. Is that correct? Um, so the, the term fire polish has come to mean that specific cut, but generally it refers to a blast of heat after the bead has been cut like and faceted to make it even more glossy and shiny. Oh, I see. They're, these are technically fire polish rounds, although they look like ovals. They're they're supposed to be round. Fire polish ovals are even more elongated. So, so interesting. I you know I kind of always thought that it was the cut, and I didn't know about that extra heat element. But that makes so much sense with the name. Um, yeah. So if you saw these and they didn't have the fire polish, then they would just be considered just like a faceted check yep. glass bead, I guess, right? Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. Cool. Good to so, know. Kristen, I figured out my hand cam. Sweet. <laughs> in Alex's absence. So um, I'm, gonna, I, I'm, I, I'm good whenever. whenever all right. I'm, I'm going to pop back over to you. Okay. Go for it. All right. So, um, Softlex was super kind to uh, ask for our involvement in the Supernova kit. So what we supplied um, for them to include in the kits was the Luna bracelet. And speaking of the like the moon faces that we were discussing earlier, I just wanted to show off my Luna bracelet ring that I made real quick. Uh, if oh my I can, gosh! I can take a moment to show that off, um, just because I wanted to just you know, show you some versatility for these these cool bracelets that uh, are in your Supernova kit. They can be cut down um, or combined together to make shorter or longer pieces. I'm so intrigued. I had no idea that you could cut them. Yeah. That's very cool. So on That's one side, there's like a tapered end and then the other side of the bracelet is not tapered. All you have to do to make that ring is just cut a piece that's your tapered end side and make sure that it's about equal to your ring size error on the longer side than the shorter side um if you're not too sure um and then keep in mind when you screw it together you're going to lose about an eighth of an inch in the length and then all you do is put your bead on and screw it together and and it's good it's done <laughs> awesome. So you, t so we, we do not cut the tapered side. We cut the other side. Is that correct? You want to leave the tapered side on whatever piece you're using. The okay. Tapered side is what can like hold it together. So exactly. once you cut it, then the, the rest of it is um, discarded, right? Well, y you could discard it, but what I like to do is save it and cut it into little spacers. So you can, oh. here, why, don't, why don't I just make a ring real quick? Is that okay, Kristen? Yes, that's fantastic. Yeah. I love it. So I've got my like flex wire cutter here. You can use just, you know, any any wire cutter that you would like to dedicate to um, jewelry making. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of put this around my finger. I like to have my Luna bracelet rings on my index finger because I like them to be the first thing I see when I look down at my hands. So I'm just going to size it by putting it around my finger. Um, this is the side that has the tapered side on it. I'm going to take my flex wire cutter and just cut in between two of those little springs on the coil. 
and I'm going to hope that I can find where it's going to focus. I know this is really tiny, so maybe if I put my hand behind it, you can see how clean this cut is. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got it for a, we got it for a second there. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is um, I see this beautiful button that was included in the Supernova kit. I'm going to just slide my Luna bracelet through the shank or what, what I will have a Luna bracelet ring out of what's, what's left of my Luna bracelet. I'm going to slide that through the shank of the button. And then what I'm going to do to connect it together, rings are a little bit trickier than bracelets, but it's no problem at all. I'm going to backspin the ends. So you see how I'm twisting my fingers like this? And you see how that causes that button to kind of hop up like that? Because when I've got this, let's pretend this is my Luna bracelet, but it's bigger so you guys can see it on a grander scale. When I backspin it like this, it's gonna wanna do that. It's gonna wanna ply on itself. That's a yarn term, forgive me for using a yarn term here, but see how it plies and twists on itself? That's what gotcha. we want happen. So we want it to get angry. So that way we know it's twisted enough. So we're gonna backspin the ends and that button's gonna wanna kinda pop up or whatever you're putting on it is gonna wanna pop up. Then, after you've backspun it, what you can do is put the tapered end inside the untapered end. And I'm gonna try to do this on camera, center and clean for you guys, but if I need to redo it a few times, forgive me. So we're gonna insert the tapered end into the untapered end and then gently allow it to unspin and you can kind of guide it with your fingers carefully. Don't over twist it. But you can see here that it's practically seamless. And now we have a beautiful ring. And what's Very really cool, cool about the, the Luna bracelets is that they're stretchy. So they're great for gift giving because let's say you don't know the ring size of the person you're gifting it to. You can take a guess. And then let's say you make it too big. You can just gently untwist it carefully, trim a little bit off, and then put it back together again. So, so am I thinking correctly in that by doing the backspin and making it kind of a little angry, when you put it um, the tapered end into the non-tapered end, it sort of spins and coils back for you? Yes. It'll okay. kind of bounce back into its original kind of tension, if that makes sense. So right. you don't want to overspin, you don't want to underspin, but as soon as you start to see it get a little bit angry, that's when you stop. And I should find a better word that <laughs> that's not so negative sounding. <laughs> it's the best word that I've used um, or that I've found so far to kind of describe um, what what's happening, I guess. So now what happens if I made it a little too big? Am I able to take it out and redo it? You can. It is not some it is not a product that necessarily is designed to be taken apart and put back together over and over and over again, but let's say you've made a mistake and you need to fix it real quick or you need to resize it. If you're careful, you can gently unscrew it. Sometimes okay. I mess them up and I ruin one, but they're pretty inexpensive. They're about a dollar a, a wire, so they're not too bad. But like, just watch how I, so I've just strung some of the beads here. Watch how I can just, you know, twist it, put it together, and then I'll close it and I'll undo one to show you. And hopefully I won't mess it up on, on live stream when we've got lots of people watching. <laughs> So you see, I've got a bracelet here. And I love it. Look at how quick and easy that was. So here's my split. You guys can barely even see that. I don't even know if you can see that because I can barely see it. And I'm looking at it in person. So it's stretchy. It's secure. I'm yanking on it hard. Nothing's coming undone. You know, I can put it over my hand. But now I can go back in and I can very carefully untwist it. And as I carefully untwist, it gets angry again. And I can change my design. Like, let's say, oh, I meant to finish that out and make it symmetrical. I could go in and adjust it and make it symmetrical. Oh, my gosh. This is so cool. Well, that was that was good. Um, that was 
good thing to find out because I was curious before we got on here whether or not you can swap the beads out by undoing and redoing, but you're actually better off um, just putting it on once and then you can undo it if you made a little little boo-boo and you want to kind of fix that, but you don't want to keep changing them out. Exactly. Yeah. What can happen if you put too much stresses uh, or stress on it when you're trying to pull it apart is it can actually stretch the coil out. This is still a coil as strong and um, wonderful and secure as they are. It is still a spring and a spring can be stretched out. So um, it's, it's not beyond, <laughs> beyond right. stretched out. You do have to kind of treat it nicely. Um, but for general use, it's going to be super, super secure. So very um, cool. I, I do want to show you guys my stack that I wear almost every day. So I like to wear a bunch of them and I like to leave most of them empty or mostly empty. And I just sometimes randomly put some stuff on them like charms or beads. We have a staff member here who fills the entire bracelet up with beads and she'll do like Morse code bracelets out of them with oh, size eights and size six bead beads. And they're like entirely beaded when she does that. Um, and so you can pretty much do like a, an almost entirely beaded bracelet with these if you are using lightweight beads. It gets a little bit trickier if you're using heavier beads when you do this. Um, just because you can't really control like the, you know, the angry twisties. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so but it's do you possible. know, do you know what the diameter is? Like what diameter um, beads fit through these? Yeah. So generally we like to recommend a 1.8. Um, so, <laughs> so like in, in layman's terms, I would say most eight millimeter gemstones, if they've got a standard standard drill, they'll fit on eight millimeter or higher. Not all of them will. Beads are manufactured all over the place by a lot of different manufacturers, but size eight and size six seed beads should go on unless they're color lined. Um, some of the color lined ones will go on depending on how thick they are. Um, but anything that has, of course, a two millimeter hole or bigger will work out just fine. So most of your large hole gemstones um, will work. Most of your larger eight millimeter or bigger Chinese crystal um, should work. A lot of the Austrian crystal will work. Um, when we get down to the like itty bitty beads like the fire polish in like threes and fours, those might not fit on, um, but anything about eight millimeter or bigger should fit on if it has like a standard size hole, if that makes sense. Very cool. And then if it's just if it's too small, you guys can just make dangles and do little dangles from it. Yes. Good point. That is another really fun thing that I like to do is just like, you know, add a bead on a head pin. Um, your supernova kit comes with head pins and you can just do either an open loop or a wrap loop. Your um, open loops, I would recommend to add them to a good quality jump ring and then add the jump ring onto the Luna. Um, because you don't want the tip of the head pin on the open loop to come into direct contact with the, um, the spring because it could snag if you press your wrist down against it. Um, but if you're doing a wrapped loop, that brings the tail of the head pin down a little bit farther. And so you've got less of a chance of it snagging. Um, but yeah, you could do just like a cute little dangle on a head pin. I'm going to try to do a little loop here. Uh, Lois is glad she caught you live. She's wanted to make a ring for her daughter and we'll have to check out your site. Yay. Thanks, Lois. Um, what else did I miss? Will the spring, Judy is asking, will the spring wire rust if you get it wet? It is stainless steel, so it should not. I wear these in the shower um, because I forget to take them off. They're so comfortable. Um, and I've not had any issues. I fall asleep in them on accident a lot of times, and I've never had a single one get discolored or spring open or anything. You guys know how good of quality um, a lot of the Tierra cast parts and pieces are. Um, I have these bracelets that I've been wearing for like 
almost two years now, and I'm wearing through the plating on Tierra Cass pieces faster than I am uh, showing any signs of wear on the Lunas. And you guys know how good of quality the Tierra Cass pieces are, so you know that that's saying something. That is saying a lot, for sure. So it's not a beautiful wrap because I was trying to keep it on screen, but I've got a wrap here. <laughs> and you can just string it directly on your Luna and have the cutest little daintiest bracelet. And let's say you're wanting to make bracelets for kids. You could easily get like the cutest little enamel charm or a little birthstone and add it on as a dangle. And then, you know, if it's like a keepsake, um, or a special charm as they get older, you can just replace the Luna and keep the charm. But remember, they're stretchy, so they're going to be secure and last a while. And then, of course, you don't have to fill the entire thing up with beads. So cute. I love the variety. I love the variety because in my mind, I was thinking like a little dangle like this. But then when you share, showed that you can just string the beads right on it, now you've got a whole nother um, option. And it's always nice to have lots of options. <laughs> oh, I wanted to show, I forgot that I put this bracelet on today because I was like, ooh, supernova, space theme. Let's yes. The <laughs> I love those little charms. Those yeah. are so cute. These are the tear cast moon phases. But I, I wanted to show that this is a size six seed bead and these are color line clear beads and these fit on just fine. So you oh, wow. a lot of seed beads on these. A lot of different Love things. that. Julie is asking, how long are they? Do you know? So, um, they come at uh, seven inch lengths and you can of course cut them down or combine them together to get shorter or longer lengths. Um, and they're real easy to twist together. We had a, a little girl in about a year and a half ago who wanted to pick out a couple of special pieces um, to put on a necklace, but she was working on a budget. So I think she was about eight years old and she had like money left from her, her birthday. And so she picked a couple of special beads and put them on a couple of Luna bracelets and connected them all together end on end. And she made the cutest over the head necklace that was just darling. And the cool oh God. is like this stuff doesn't catch your hair. So yeah, like, that's surprising and fantastic. <laughs> I, I am, uh, I have arm hair as do a lot of us. And when I first found them, I was like, mm, I don't know. I grew up in the nineties and I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm <laughs> like spring guitar string bracelets that would like yank your arm hair out. Oh my gosh. But these are nothing like that. They're so soft and supple and they do not catch hair at all. If you stretch it out significantly and like put it over your head, you could, you could catch hair in it, but not when, when you're just wearing it there. They're really soft and comfy. So. That's really good to know. I'm sure that was a question some people were thinking and had on their mind. Yeah. Um, Diane says, I just love the little dangle. It looks like a tiny fruit. It does, doesn't it? I just, I found that little bead cap in the supernova kit. And I was like, oh, I got to make like a cute little tomato or strawberry or something out of this blue bead. Blueberry would probably have been a better first thing to mention, but... <laughs> Rebecca <laughs> is ready for a road trip. She's headed your way. <laughs> let's, let's do it. Let's have that big party. <laughs> and Rosalinda says she loves hers. She also has hairy arms and never had a problem. Well, good. Um, I did mention that uh, you can use these little pieces. Like this is this would be the like discarded piece that we made the ring out of. You can actually cut these down to be spacers between your beads for earrings or like if you're stringing on soft flex. Um, let's say you're making a really cool design with some medium and you're wanting, sorry, I'm trying to take the spool cover off of my soft flex. <laughs> so <laughs> you're wanting to have just, you know, something a little bit bulkier than soft flex between your beads, you can actually use this to space apart your beads. And then my favorite way to use the little discard pieces that you cut off is actually on earrings. 
So like, let's say you've got a longer head pin, you can put your bead on the bottom and just use one bead, but elongate your earring by placing your little cut piece on top to cover your head pin, make it a little bit more sturdy and make it look a little bit more finished. And it looks really cool. Yeah, that's a neat idea. I love that. Thanks. <laughs> Judy's Judy's also planning the road trip. So it sounds like we're going to have to get a beating, a live beating party on the books here. Awesome. <laughs> We've got a huge parking lot now. We're in a complex with like a Best Buy and a Burlington and Dollar Tree. And so there's like parking lots for, or parking lot spots for miles. Like I can't oh even count the number of spots that we have available. So that makes such Everybody a big comes. difference. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. What else do we got here? Oh, Penny is saying that Abby, that was essentially what the original Epi lady was. It was a spring that grabbed and yanked the hair out of your legs. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. Yeah. Painful, but effective. Okay. So well, this is not an Epi lady, the Luna no, bracelet. But no, no. <laughs> but Kristen, do you remember like back in the, you, you probably were a grunge girl. Like I was like how we would just bit. have those like bald spots on our wrists from wearing those guitar string bracelets. Like <laughs> they work, I, but <laughs> these these don't do I that. didn't wear the guitar strings as much, but I did wear like the spiky bracelets. You remember oh. the really, yep. I had, I remember I found one at a vintage store um, in New York City and I, it was like the real deal. So Ooh. it was like a weapon. It wasn't the, it wasn't the rounded off ones that are like yeah. soft that now it was the, I think I might even still have it somewhere. You should, <laughs> you should repurpose it. I would love to see that. That would, that be, would be super wild. fun. Do you, um, do you, have you used the check glass spikes that are available? Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, no, I've just played with dagger beads. I haven't, I do have some spikes in my stash though, but I haven't done anything with them yet. I'll have to, I have to look at your YouTube channel. I have a feeling oh, you might have something there. Do yeah. you? We, <laughs> we did like a, a grunge or punk reinvented design. Actually, maybe we did it in one of our Facebook live shows. We do Facebook lives every Wednesday at seven. Um, and we we did like a Rizo show. Rizos are those really cool beads that we, in fact, I have Rizos on. I just have all my favorites on. Oh, so good. Rizos are these cool little rice. Oh, I have some of those. I do yeah. have, those look really cute on that. Um, guys, that's a Softlex bracelet she's got it right is. there. It is. This that was one. Yeah, that, this is for customer appreciation week for Softlex. We did this yes. tutorial in the VIB group. So. Yes, and you can also find it on the Softlex Company YouTube channel. You can yeah. go back and watch that again there too. And that is just made with the Softlex heavy diameter, the Rizos, and that one little um, focal bead that you got on there. Yep. Super cool. I love that design. Well, thanks. We did little like beaded Rizo balls um, to be like little spiky balls. Uh, and then we mixed them with some of the check glass spikes and I, I thought it turned out like, I don't know, like a mature version of like the punk spike jewelry that we all got in. Know and love. <laughs> <laughs> I have someone here saying that, um, where did I see it? Where did I see it? Oh, Diane, she says she still has some of her spike bracelets and necklaces. And she remembers actually going to PetSmart and buying herself a spiked dog collar. <laughs> Oh, you know, when I was in junior high, all the cool girls did that. I, mm -hmm. I did the Hot Topic stuff, but I didn't. So I didn't into PetSmart. speaking to that, it's not exactly the same, but I, um, I took to wearing bicycle chains as necklaces, uh -huh. <laughs> like uh -huh. a real bicycle chain that you would lock up your bike with. Yep. <laughs> It was monstrous. And I remember I went on a trip with my grandparents to Niagara Falls and I had my bicycle chain necklace on and they were just like, uh, okay, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> you know, had to I had to accessorize in a different way, even back then, I guess. Yeah. That was pre, pre me learning how to make my own jewelry. <laughs> I feel like we are kindred souls, Kristen, because totally. I, I was the girl in high school that was like known for weird stuff. 
like right weird and wearing interesting jewelry so um, oh my gosh i don't know if that was you but if it was <laughs> i definitely dressed weird um julie is asking can you secure the beads so they don't move so um you can but our best recommendation for that would be like gs hypo cement glue um you don't want to crimp down on this wire because that's going to ruin the like structural integrity of the coil but our staff has found that like the hypo cement glue works really well for that so awesome do you guys sell the hypo cement glue as well do but um i don't know if you guys have a, a glue that you you offer online but if you have any we have your gummy kind of glues they'll work well yeah i think we have um hypo cement and special tea glue those are the two that we uh that so, we carry those are both excellent glues so i would say uh with your next softlux order if you don't already have hypo cement glue add that to your shopping cart and and you can try it out on projects like this because i actually e6000 specialty and hypo cement are my top three glues that i use in rotation awesome thomas says he has not outgrown weird <laughs> <laughs> isn't it nice to know i feel like in, in a lot of ways i've gotten weirder um with age just in a different way <laughs> <laughs> i i just like, I don't know, I used to almost be ashamed of it. Like once I got out of high school and I was like, oh, I have to like answer to my choices now. Like, I, I don't know, this is weird, but I grew out of that, like, I don't know, hyper self-aware phase. And now I'm just rolling with it. I'm just making weird stuff that I like and I'm, I'm all about it. The weirder, the better. Totally. No, I used to, um, I was a big thrift store shopper as a kid. So I always found some really interesting things and I am still today. And I actually, my, um, my youngest is 15 and he loves to thrift shop. So he sort of reinvigorated that in me the last year or so. So we go together and he's got a very interesting style as well. Not my style, but totally his own. <laughs> We're big thrift store shoppers too. In fact, I'm looking at our front window at a Goodwill. So we were really excited to. <laughs> oh, that would be dangerous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, this is so fun. I see that Linda says she's loving all those purples and amethysts and blues. They are her favorites. Yeah, Abby is working right now with the beads from the Supernova kit um, over at Softlex Company. We did sell out of this kit but you can still get the Supernova bead mix, which I think she's mostly using right now, and um, some of the other Supernova items that were in the in the full kit to begin with. Yeah. Kelly is joining us a little late. What is this magic beading tube being used? So <laughs> Kelly, um, we are using the Luna bracelets that you can find over at thebeadplace.net. And if you happen to get the Softlex Company Supernova kit, you would have gotten two of these included as an extra special surprise. This is such a beautiful kit. I'm just having the most fun time just putting all these beads that fit so beautifully on these Luna bracelets. I'm just stringing them at random and having a really good time making pretty bracelets with the Lunas. It really, it's a colorway that just, I can't see you not falling in love with this particular kit. It's just yeah. so pretty. Yep, definitely. These little jump rings that are included in the kit can string on really nicely as spacers too. Yeah, that's what I did. I just kind of stuck those on there with one of the little moon guys. I found the ring to be a little bit easier than the bracelet for some reason um, oh, yeah? to, to get on, but I think I finally just got it, got it on. I'm excited. <laughs> it's kind of one of those things where like the conditions have to be right for your first couple times doing it. You have to make sure your elbows are down on the table or your wrists are down on the table. So you've got steady hands. And then once you get the hang of like figuring out like the backspin process like you see how my fingers are like doing the opposite almost so like my thumb is going forward on one side and my index finger is going forward on the other side 
Yeah. So you're doing that opposite backspin, then you put it in and kind of just gently close it to release it. Then, yeah, like, I was not putting right. my elbows down on the table. I think that yeah. would have probably, I was holding it up in the air all willy nilly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you I think that was a tip. Down close to it. You guys see me hunched over on the table. That's like the only <laughs> way that I can do it. So, Kim said she just bought two Luna bracelet kits, and Sandra you. is asking, <laughs> so you just twist the wire inside. You yeah. do, yeah. One of the one of the ends has a little bit of a taper on it. So um you twist, you twist you back twist and get it to kind of get angry, as Abby likes to say. <laughs> and then you um put the side that doesn't have the taper over the taper side or put the taper side inside the other one and then it twists back into place. And then once it's in place, it's just like together, it's very cool. And you it's, don't see the seam at all. Yeah. Really neat. It's almost invisible. We we almost called it an invisible seam with our marketing, but we we're like, no, if you've got your good glasses on, you can see it. But let me let me kind of just demonstrate real quick for you, Sandra, so you can see. Um, this is the tapered end, so it's just slightly smaller than the untapered end. If you've got your good glasses on, you can see it, or at least that's me. Um, and how it works is you string your beads or you can wear it empty if you want and just wear a stack of empty ones and be fashionable that way. But you're going to backspin it. So what that means is you're basically going to like twist the coil back on itself. So I'm going to spin it so that it kind of gets angry at the bottom. I'm going to put the tapered end inside the untapered end. And this is where it comes in handy to make sure your elbows or your wrists are down on the table. And then just gently guide the two together as they unspin and it'll lock itself right into place. And then, you know, I'm pulling on this with a lot of might here. It's not coming undone. So then it's locked and then you've got a bracelet. So, so cool. Beverly is asking, do you sell those um, stainless stretch cords separately? And I believe you do. We do. They come in packages of 10 or you can buy them individually. The 10 pack is a little bit of a better deal. Um, they just come in packs of 10 just for ease. But you can get a pack like this from our website. Um, and then if you just want to buy a few of them, just send us a message uh, on Facebook and we can throw an invoice together for you for however oh, many you'd like. You need you need 10. You need 10 yeah, of them at least. <laughs> <laughs> They're yeah, fun. At least. They are a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, thank you. You're welcome, Kelly says. These are awesome. Thanks for the demo. And Janelda says, is the ring you have on made with a lunar wire? It, it is. is. Check out both of these. So this is the one that we made. If you, if you missed this one earlier, um, you can watch the replay of this stream. Um, where we made this one. And then this is one that I wore just because it was like on brand for the for the Supernova event. <laughs> that we're so doing. cute. Um, but these are both tear cast pieces. This one's a button and I just strung it through the shank. And then this one is their moon face bead. And I just strung through the bead like I would with any other stringing material. And then you just twist it together the same way that we do the bracelets. Um, it, I find that the, the ring is a little trickier because there's less to hold on to, but Kristen found that the ring was a little bit easier than doing the bracelet. So yeah, whatever oddly. works best for you, <laughs> use those tricks and tips that you've got to make things easy and keep your hands steady. Um, like I said, I just always like to make sure my hands or elbows are down on the table and that helps me to stop from shaking. <laughs> um, and then uh, like it really, once you get the hang of it, like the first couple twists, you kind of have to work with it and just figure out with your hands what to do. Um, once you get it down, you, you can do them back to back and it gets a lot easier. Oh my gosh, they're so cool. Um, super, super cool. They look like they'd be great for Diane's jewelry booth. And at least uh, the length of them is about seven inches and they are stretchy. And Paula's got a 10 pack in her future. Yay, yay. Patty just got two packs. <laughs> and Terry looks like she made some wonderful Christmas gifts with them. So she loves them too. So cool. yeah, 
these were one of those things that we put in the kit because we know you guys would love, love them, but they were for sure something you needed to kind of see what to do with. Um, so I'm hoping that those of you that had a lot of questions about them um, now see all the possibilities and all the fun stuff that you can create. Yeah, um, thank, yes. thank you for for um, allowing me to be able to show how to do these. Because like you said, it, w looking at them, you wouldn't really know what what to do. to do but yeah once once you unlock the door the possibilities are endless oh my gosh yeah they um they are very cute and easy wearing gloria and i do not believe the cord will stretch out of shape easily yeah. uh they do uh, they could pull out of shape if you really yanked on them but um it looks like they're pretty sturdy and like abby says she wears them all the time and has them on at all times and she's gotten um great results with that yeah and i uh, sorry to interrupt but i just want to okay. say like when when you make a few of them we recommend rolling them on and off your wrist like this and and don't do what i'm about to show you i'm going to try to get my hands in the screen i'm zoomed oh. in so you guys can see um the connections but like look at this i'm yanking on this super hard and I'm taking all of them on and off all at once and not a single one popped open. Like that that was some abuse that I put on these. Not a single one of them popped open. I, I have had this stack, um, give or take a few, I add and take away sometimes just to change up my designs. Um, but I, I've had this stack for two years and I do this almost every day where I just yank them on and off my wrist and they don't pop open. I accidentally fall asleep wearing them all the time. I wear them in the shower on accident when I forget to take them off and they hold up very well because they're stainless steel. So they're so they're tough. <laughs> very similar to any kind of stretch bracelet. You'd always want to roll them off your wrist. You'd never want to kind of yank it. Um, let's see, just a couple more questions here. Janelda is asking, if you only cut once for rings due to the taper end, yes. So once you cut it, um, the other part is no longer able to go uh, into one another, but Abby shared some great ideas of cutting them and making spacer beads or using them in earrings to add to your designs in a different way. Cause you can string soft flex right down the center of these. Yep. So they can be kind of a little tube um, spacer for what you have left. Kathy says they're big fun. And yes. Judy is asking a good question. Um, I think they only come in the one size. Uh, right. She said, do you sell longer than seven inches? So they're only, yeah. Like, can you, can yeah. you connect them? Yes. So you, um, what a lot of our customers do to make necklaces or bracelets that are larger than seven inches is they just combine them together to get the perfect length. Now, when you're using larger beads, that's going to set the bracelet out farther on your wrist. Um, a lot of our customers who make um, more masculine style jewelry will use large gemstones on these and make those um, like almost like David Yerman inspired pieces with like the big round gemstones. And a lot of those look great as stretchy bracelets with no clasp. Um, but when you're putting the investment of large stones on stretch, there's always that risk that it's gonna break and you're gonna lose your beads. So obviously these being stainless steel are gonna be a lot stronger, a lot more wear resistant, a lot more durable, um, but it's gonna sit out farther on your wrist, you know, cause the beads push it out further. So in that case, what we recommend doing is just <coughs> a length off or using some of the, um, <coughs> Um, from when you've made bracelets smaller or when you've cut bracelets down into rings. Um, and, and then you can kind of elongate things that way. Um, and then also, if you like the look of the Lunas and you just kind of want the, the option to be able to take them on and off, what Kristen was mentioning earlier is that you totally can just cut the tapered end off of the one side and string soft flex through it, add your beads in, cut pieces and add a clasp to it if you'd like, because they're they're beautiful and kind of like a trendy look on their own, um, just looking like chain, if that makes sense. I, I don't know if you guys have seen the ads like on Facebook and 
um, like in some of the, the fashion magazines and stuff for just stacks of, of stainless steel chain bracelets, but um, they're beautiful just on their own. So I think they're cool. <laughs> oh, I was unmuted. <laughs> I, had a, I, mean, my, I had a little dog bark <laughs> going on down over here. So <laughs> I muted ourselves. Um, so many questions. These little bracelets are just so intriguing for so many of us. It's They're awesome. So Sandra is asking, is there a benefit to putting the soft licks down the middle? I think Abby just shared, you know, you can if you wanted to make it more um, something that you can open and close and have a clasp, or it's great to use it if you have the little pieces left over, if you made some rings. That would be the benefit, I think, if you wanted to, you know, like anything, we can all make different decisions about our designs and how we want to use a product. Um, Lois is asking, after you use it once, can you cut it at an angle so it'll fit into the other end? I don't believe so. The way it's tapered is it's tapered down on both sides, kind of towards a point, kind of like a pencil. So if, even if you cut each side, it's not going to be exactly... Um, the same as the way that tapering kind of goes down. So it, it really is that you'll have to find other uses for the other pieces, but that just creates another fun design challenge to figure out how do you use the little pieces. And yeah, Softlex Company is saying dogs love Luna bracelets too. <laughs> Mary wanted you all to know how much she loves them as well. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you guys what I made real fast while we were chatting. Just super. Um, and I'm excited to figure out what to do with my little leftover piece. Yeah. Can't wait to see. Oh, so how I'm, cute. Isn't that sweet? So I just used that little moon face, some of those um, blues and grays from the supernova bead mix and then i left the back kind of fun and just open so they can slide around and um i think it just came out so darling and i was gonna just put a bunch of these jump rings on um i liked how you did that and i was thinking about in the beginning oh that would be fun with just jump rings on it like just very simple industrial um and that would be great if you've got multiple ones on your wrist to play with definitely and then I made a ring. I love it. I have a pretty large uh, ring size. So finding rings is not the easiest for me. So this is super fun to think about how um, you can take a button or other items and make yourself a little ring. Those of you that have, and if anyone shopped our live sale where we had all those beautiful vintage check glass buttons, I actually didn't get any, but they would be really fun. Um, gorgeous. Yeah, that would be really cool. And this one was in the Supernova kit. Um, I don't know if you sell this one too, but we do sell this one at Softlex Company. Do you also carry yeah. this one? You do? Okay, so yeah. you can find it over at the bead place too while you're picking up your Luna bracelets. <laughs> um, really, isn't it, really isn't it fun. is comfy? Like, I just love how comfortable the rings are. It feels like you're not even wearing a ring. It's totally that. It. I don't even feel it. I mean, if the button, you know, just sort of kind of hangs out. I did take me two times to get my size because I overestimated. Like I said, my my rings are usually pretty big, so I was afraid of cutting it too short. And I was able to open it up and get it back in twice. I don't know that I would do it another time, but I, <laughs> but I did get it. I did get it twice. Patty has a bunch of buttons, so that would be a great way to use them, Patty. Definitely. Let's go. Let's go back to, uh, here, let me take this guy out of that. There we go. Oh, Elise has some buttons that she hasn't used yet either. Yeah, such a fun way. And it really shows off the button, you know? Some yeah. of our buttons get stuck other places. They're not like the main focus. And this is the main focus. Mm -hmm. So, so great. So, um, you know, we could probably chat all night long. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks everybody so much for joining us today. Be sure to check out Abby over at thebeadplace.net. Find Abby Berta on YouTube for all of her fantastic um, tutorials there. And I think she's got a live coming up tonight. 
Yeah, in just under an hour, we'll be over on the Bead Places Facebook page, 7 p.m. Central. We are doing a small show tonight. We're usually there every Wednesday um, with uh, shows that you can shop. Um, we're doing some new check glass tonight. So we'll have some fun check glass strands and some uh, vintage reproduction metal clasps and findings. Awesome. That sounds like a fantastic show. So be sure to go check her out. Go over there, like the page, and um, you can catch her live again in just a, in just yeah. under an hour. Um, <laughs> and also check out thebeadplace.net. Is there anything else you want to share with us before you go, Abby? Just how much I appreciate this opportunity to hang out with you. This has been super fun. I, I love that we can get together in the bead extravaganza. Um, and the meetings are always so great, but I think um, that this, I don't know, I, I like you and I like Soft oh. and this has been really, really fun. So thank you. I like you too. So <laughs> let's do more. We'd love to have you back on again, or okay. we'd love to join you over on your show too. So yeah. um, we can uh, we can chat and, and set something else up because awesome. we're always, I know we'd always have a good time. That's yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks so much for being here with us today. And we'll all you. see you soon. Like Bye. and share if you love this video, for sure. Share with your friends. And if you have anyone saying, what can I do with these Luna bracelets? Um, be sure to share this video. <laughs> all right. Talk to you soon. Bye, Bye everybody.